Twisted? Twisted? I suppose we all are, aren't we? Twisted? Really? I've always wanted to meet one. Twisted? Isn't that another way of saying interesting? Twisted? Who done it? Twisted? Is it genetic? Twisted? I'll show you twisted. Twisted? You should meet my uncle. Twisted? Where? Twisted? Some of my best friends are twisted. Twisted? Been there, done that, paid. Twisted? Does it work for you? Twisted? What do you expect? Twisted? Twisted. Thank you. But it's sort of like, I mean, whatever, I'm, I, how do I say this? You know, if, uh, I actually have a lot of fun writing. I like writing. And there are people who, are, I think it is, uh, you know, after Hemingway and all, it's supposed to be very, oh, I, I hate writing, but I do it because, you know, and out of this pain, I pull words and I put them down. This sometimes happens, I must confess. I'm suddenly feeling like I'm lying madly. But largely, I have fun writing. I enjoy writing. I enjoy even, like, the sex work writing that I do, meaning the work, you know, where you sometimes you have to go out and do writing for the money. Just plainly you say, you know, chalo, bazaar mein hum baitte hain, bhao lagao, paiste ki ek word ka kitna dega, tu bol. And someone says, ye itna le lo, you say, chal, de, de, kar deta hu, le ye, article le, chapwa de. And it goes off and it, it's how it happens. Some things you don't, don't come out of anywhere except the top of your head. Some come from a little lower down in the reptilian brain. Some come from an intersection of nerve and gut and spine and sinew. And that's where the novel came from. It came from a real place. But there's things, some things that you do. Even when I'm doing that, I often feel the, the work that comes just off the top of your head, which is kind of like, you know, I still feel very, very much like I'm, I'm privileged to be doing it. I'm privileged to be writing. I'm privileged that I have people who will chapwao me. I'm privileged that there are people who read. I just feel that that's good fun. It is, it's overall, I mean, I think we, we writers, and everybody, I think, is discovering with social media now how much they want to be writers. You know, they, everyone who blogs or tweets or whatever is also saying, I'm a writer. I have opinions free mein mil raha abhi le na wo padhne ki kya zarurat hai why buy a book idhar free hai sir le le mera opinion 140 characters mein ho gaya i think that is and because self expression is also part of the, that's also part of the, that's my bigger theory we won't go into it now okay yeah next question sorry she was worried that she'll have to do a lot of talking she said <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's quite easy doing this i can do this again uh, so i'm going to ask you about your reading since huh. you're talking about reading oh uh, does it does it, uh, is it in the same, is it like a counterpoint to what you write or is it a counterpart to what you write? Do you read differently or do you read similarly? You know, my grandmother used to say, Baba, buy one book, read it, get rid of it. Buy another book, read it, get rid of it. You only have two eyes, how many books can you read? Which is true, you only have two eyes and even if you're really cockeyed like I am because I have negative 13.5 in one eye, negative 5 in the other is very bad. Uh, you know, unbalanced vision. You still can only read one book at a time. You, that's the wonderful thing about a book. There's no multitasking involved. Maybe you can listen to music, but I, if I start listening to music when I'm reading, I completely stop listening to the music. I just read. Um, so I think we have about 9,000 books at home in a 450 square foot flat. So there's very little place. And, you know, I love reading the history of coal. I love reading novels. I like reading Porporino, or the story of the last uh, Castrati in, in Italy, and which is a book I just discovered. Rupa brought it out, Rupa France. Did you know there was a Rupa France imprint? Yeah, they just hide these things. They've done some lovely books, Michel Chabon, The Meaning, what, The Beginning of the End or something like that. Very slim little book that doesn't mean anything, but is beautifully written. <laughs> This books under, and right now, this is the terrifying and horrible truth about being a writer. If you have a novel inside you, okay, and you don't want to write it, or you're not writing it, well, too bad, because there are enough novels in the universe. There's enough writing for everybody to read for the next 200 years without stopping. Everyone, 
every reader here will tell you that at her bedside there is a pile of books that she should be reading there is a pile of books she wants to read and there is the book she is reading quietly quietly with chocolate <laughs> yeah so it and there are books that you have to read professionally there are books that you, your friend comes and tells you very nice book and gives you a copy i mean stick endlessly there's the yogi book that someone gave you because their sadhu is also your sadhu should be your sadhu whatever the books endlessly so if you the only reason to write a book now is because you want to write that book and then it will find its readers then it will make a space for itself and people will buy it and read it but you there is no imperative there is no imperative to write another book from the world it's not like everyone's breathlessly waiting for the a new book you know the panjana has just taken over the uh, the books page of dna will tell you that i mean the struggle for space must be titanic right now right i mean there must be about like 20 to 30 books coming in every week and four or five can be accommodated so if you want to write a book and saloni this goes for you as well <laughs> and saloni and i have been discussing her novel for for years then you just just jolly well write it because that's the imperative the imperative is you is that you believe there is something new that you have to say there is something that valuable that you have to say go to say it don't expect people to to draw it out of you it's not going to happen it isn't there a lot of pressure what if you don't think what you're saying is that grand no then chop hut go hut hut <laughs> you have to believe in yourself because see the actually the act of writing is an act of belief in a future it because if you are if i'm talking to you i'm saying it i'm transmitting it it's over but if i write it down i'm i'm writing it already for a reader who does not exist right now i'm writing it into the future that means i'm assuming there's a future that means i'm assuming that there's a tomorrow that means that all writing is an act of huge optimism and an act of huge faith okay so if you have that optimism and have that faith that's all that powers you baki ka khuda jaane yaar there must be millions and millions of great books that no one is reading today we know that john dun was ignored until t s eliot rescued him we know that shakespeare went through a, a period in his in the historic life cycle when nobody read shakespeare until he was rescued in his day politics power all these things play a role has that ever stopped anybody it shouldn't stop you i love you know victor anant was uh, chapu wrote a, a novel called the the revolving man adil jasawala told me that he wrote three novels after that none of them were published i think writing the second novel when the first hasn't been published is an act of huge courage it requires huge self confidence to do it and to write the third after that means that you are completely sure that this is what you need to be doing and you're not writing your first novel Ha. Huh. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> no, but you didn't answer my question. What Which are one? you reading? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What am I reading? Oh, uh at any given point in time I'm reading about 8 or 9 books all together. I just found one called by called The 100 Stories by Robert Taylor in a uh, paperback edition that is falling apart and uh it's all dirty stories you know <laughs> so and so slept with so and so and then he pretended his testicles were non existent and he went to the, her husband and said i do not have testicles and husband said oh my goodness now you must look after my wife